Hi all. In lab one, I had given you a uh, lab that will give you practice on calculating meter tolerance and accuracy, and also a way for you to witness the effect that a meter has on the circuit that's being measured. As troubleshooters, you, you need an understanding of your meter and you need an understanding of the effect that a meter has when you place it in a circuit. Because when you're placing a meter into a circuit, you're changing the characteristics of that circuit. So knowing your meter is very important. Now as part of that lab, I gave you a problem to do some research that looking back on was probably a little too much for the level at which you're all at at this point. So I thought I would do a solution for that particular problem in the lab. The problem was for you to calculate tolerances on a VOM, and I have a face of a Simpson 260 on the screen right now, because the accuracy of a Simpson VOM and many other VOMs are measured in degrees of arc and not in like percent of full scale. Also, what I'd like you to take notice is that on the resistance scale, which is this top scale, it is not a linear scale. If you look at the DC voltage and current scales, they are very linear. Each one of the graduation marks are equal across the entire range of the scale. But on the resistance scale, the resistance scale is not linear. So they specify this in degrees of arc. So there is an article that if you, if you did try to do some research, and I know some of you did, and were coming up dry on it, there was an article published in the January, February, March issue of Cal Lab magazine in the year 2015 that was written by Thomas Morgan. Thomas Morgan goes through a very nice explanation as to how to calculate tolerance on a nonlinear resistance scale, such as the Simpson 260. One of the first things you need to know in order to do this is the degrees of arc of the meter movement. So if we're measuring percent in degrees of arc, we have to also know, not percent, but accuracy in degrees per arc, we have to know how many degrees this entire meter is. Well, there's an easy way to find that out. If you took a protractor and laid it on the meter face, you can easily measure the angle from this end of the scale over to this end of the scale. Now, I have a... Uh, protractor, an electronic one here, which I downloaded, and it's not going to be very accurate because there's there's distortions in, in graphics and there's distortions with the image on the screen. I already know what the, the whole s angular sweep of the scale is, but what you would do with this protractor is if you look at the meter movement, this meter pointer comes down along here and it actually the center point is down in here someplace. So the center point of the protractor would be moved down to the pivot point of the meter. And if you follow this line or this point, the upper end of the scale, it comes through the 40, the 140 part. And if you follow this one through, this is where distortion occurs. It comes through the 40 to 140 point here. And if you go between these two points, 40 to 140, it's 100 degrees. So the, the value of that arc 
the value of the angle from full scale to to min scale is a hundred degrees that's part of what we need to know the next thing we need to know is some electrical characteristics of the Simpson 260 meter so I looked up the user manual for the Simpson 260 meter which I'm now showing on the screen uh, these manuals for most anything you want you can get a manual an operator manual or even a service manual online for pretty much any piece of equipment you're you're looking for and as I scroll down through I'm looking for some specs on the resistance range and here I have them where it says resistance here for the specifications and we're going to look at the R times 1 range so that says on the range we can read 0 to 2000 ohms the center reading is 12 ohms so if I go back to that drawing or that picture if I look at the center scale of this meter there's 10 ohms there's 15 ohms each one of these marks is is 1 ohm so right here is the center of the scale and that's 12 ohms and that's exactly what this states that the center reading is 12 ohms it's also telling us that the nominal open circuit voltage is 1.5 volts and here it's even telling us what the nominal short circuit current is and that's what the meter leads short it is 12 well, I'm sorry 125 milliamps and when I come down to the specification R times 1 is sorry 2.5 degrees of arc so let's see how we can look at and calculate the, the tolerance of the resistance scale so I'm going to switch over to this pad and we know that we are going to be using the R times 1 scale we also know that the tolerance is 2.5 degrees of arc we know that it's using a 1.5 volt battery and that's DC and I didn't go further into the specification but it's using a D cell and a D cell is your standard flashlight type battery so we know that the meter has an open circuit voltage so we have an open circuit voltage of 1.5 volts and we know that the center scale is 12 ohms and this is something that you might not have known is that that also tells us what the internal resistance of the meter is so the internal resistance of the meter on the R times 1 scale is equal to 12 ohms so this specification can we can start doing some mathematics actually with this equation so we know that the R internal and I'll say R internal is going to equal external resistance external resistance then full scale short circuit current can be calculated now we already know that it's 125 milliamps but we can say that the current at short circuit is equal to the voltage at short circuit divided by the internal resistance so the voltage at short circuit we also know that is 1.5 volts 
and the internal resistance is 12 ohms. Therefore, the short circuit current is 0 0.125 amps or 125 milliamps. So already we know we got 1.5 volts across the meter leads. We have an internal resistance to this meter of 12 ohms and the short circuit current is 125 milliamps. So we can come up with an equation to calculate the current at any unknown resistance simply by using, again, this is nothing but Ohm's law, guys and gals. We can use I is equal to 1.5 volts, which we know is the voltage, over the 12 ohms of internal resistance plus the R of the unknown value. And that'll give us the current for the resistor that we're measuring. Okay, I'm headed to something here because you're probably saying, why do I need to know the current if I'm measuring resistance? Well, let's go back and look at that meter face again. That meter face, oops, wrong document, sorry. That meter face, again, if you look at that ohms scale, is very nonlinear. However, again, if you look at this DC voltage current range or scale, it is very linear. So if I take these, this 0 to 250 range and divide it by 2, I come up with 125 full scale, so it's 0 to 125. That's a nice scale to use because remember, full scale current, which is short circuit current, is 125 milliamps for the R times 1 scale. We also know that the meter movement is linear from 0 to 100 degrees of arc. So from 0 to 100 degrees of arc, we also know that it's linear. So we know a couple of things now. A couple of things that are, are rather important that we understand. So again, we know we know our current, and we know the voltage, we know resistance, we know that it's linear over a hundred degrees of arc. So since I have 125 milliamps for the full scale, I can find out how much current it takes to deflect the meter by one degree. And that's really simple to do by saying 125 milliamps divided by 100 degrees will give me 1.5. 2.5 milliamps per degrees. So for every degree of movement on this meter, I will be generating 1.25 milliamps. I can go further than that now and say that with that, because my tolerance is 2.5 degrees of arc, I can calculate the current that's required to make the meter move 2.5 degrees. And that can be easily done by saying 2.5 degrees times the 125 milliamps per, I'm sorry, the 1.25 milliamp per degree which comes up to 3.125 milliamps. Sorry, I'm running out of paper space there. So for 2.5 degrees of arc, 
knowing that I'm at 1.25 milliamps per degree, for every 2.5 degrees of arc, I have 3.125 milliamps. That's important information for us to know. So with all that information, an equation can now be derived to calculate the resistance at any current. So now I can say that R is equal to 1.5 volts over the current minus 12. So this is R is equal to E over I minus the original 12 ohms and that'll give me the R. So if I know what the current is and I can measure the current on the current scale of the VOM, divide that into my source voltage that the VOM is supplying minus the 12 ohms of internal resistance and I will get the value of the resistor that I'm trying to measure. Okay, that was a lot. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to apply this to actually calculating the tolerances.